this guy's back. So, you know. It's Monday, June 3rd. Mmm. Tea is good. Hello. I'm in a weird mood today. I haven't been sleeping well for the past four days. I had a lovely time last week and I hope you had too. My sister-in-law Sue and her husband Claude were in town. We did some chatting, a little bit of shopping, not much. And we had our pedicure done and we drank some wine and we just chilled and it was so nice. It was so relaxed. I have a couple of flower cards to show you today. We're into flowers today. Um, I'll be using some Impression Obsession stamps to do a tutorial for the store, but I think I'm going to do a separate, tutorials, a separate tutorial for you guys because you have requested a real-time tutorial and I don't necessarily want to do or put up the tutorial that I do for the store because it's a French one this week with subtitles in English so I think I'm going to do a separate one for you guys so if you're watching me or if you uh, are following me on both channels you're going to get two tutorials today. So I'm gonna get busy now um, and I will insert the footage that I don't have yet right now. Okay so for this tutorial I'm gonna be using this beautiful standby impression obsession it's called Darling Dahlia it's number H8715 so if you're lucky enough to have a store near you and you can find this stamp uh, you won't regret it it's absolutely gorgeous and if you're local to Montreal you can go check out uh, Scrapbook Central in DDO. So my first step is I want to create a mask because I will be stamping something in the background but I don't want to cover my flower. So I have some masking paper here and I know that this type of paper unfortunately does not, um, is no longer sold in that format. I know there's a few other paper that do exist but if worse comes to worse you can also use a big um, post-it note. So I'm going to be using it's the Distress Ink and Picked Raspberry, one of Tim Holtz's new colors from last summer. So it's not brand new. And I'm going to sip a flower. And I'm going to fussy cut this. And when I cut it, I don't want to go inside the lines, but just outside of it. And that will ensure that you have a good masking. Here's the mask, and this is what I meant by cutting just outside of the stamp line. I don't uh, want to see white on the outside here. So cutting as close as the outside of the stamp line means that you will have an exact replica of your flower once it's stamped on your paper. So this is a piece of watercolor paper that measures four and three quarters by four and three quarters. I'm using 90 pound weight today, but you can also use 140 pound weight. It's just, I happen to have a paper that size. We're doing, um, I'm making a square card today. So I'm stamping the flower again with the picked raspberry, the Distress Ink from Ranger. I'll stamp it right here, kind of like in the corner, more towards the bottom than the top. Make sure that I have a good impression. There we go. And I'll just give it a little bit of a dry with my heat tool, just because I don't want to mess anything up. And I'm going to put that mask right over the flower. So I'll find the exact position. There we go. So my mask is in place now. I'm going to take that text stamp. Um, it's from Bo Bunny. It's called It Is Written Stamp number 101057591. It's got a whole bunch of beautiful textures or background elements, I guess. And now we're going to watercolor this this flower, but I don't want the 
text to be all muddled at the end. So I'm going to be using an archival ink for that. This is a waterproof ink. You could also use stays on. I needed that specific color and this one is sap green. So um, this will ensure that my text will not get or will not disappear uh, after I finish coloring or coloring the, um, the whole background. So I'm going to stand this right in the corner here and as you can see I'm going over the flower make sure I'm stamping this properly and um, there are some spots that are missing here but the stamp is made like that if you can see here I have some blank spots it's meant to be a texture background stamp And now I'm going to remove my mask and as you can see the text goes seems like it goes under the flower It's a little trick and once you've done a mask obviously keep it because you can use it over and over again Which is the cool thing. Okay, so here's what I have on my work surface right now. I have a palette here with some wells. I'm going to drop ink um, into these wells. If you don't have that, you can just use your craft mat um, or a palette uh, paper. I just happen to be very uh, messy and sometimes when I move my paper I walk into the color that are on my mat so I like to use this. Here I have a bucket of water and two water brushes, uh, watercolor brushes and they're of different size and you'll definitely need a heat tool. I have a dry cloth. This is just um, a paper towel and a baby wipe always. So I'm going to start by coloring the background and for the background I'm going to be using three different color and actually my darker color I'm going to use at the end. So to begin with I'm going to add Pool Party um, ink refill and this is by Stampin' Up! and uh, I have also Lucky Limeade. And no, before you ask me, I am not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator anymore. I just happen to have a lot of their products. Um, if I had the Distress Inks, I would try to use them. Um, I find they react better to water, but unfortunately I don't have all the colors yet. So I'm going to put a little drop of the Pool Party you really don't need much. A little goes a long way. And this is Lucky Limeade. They're two gorgeous colors. They really go well together. What I usually do is I start by watering the area where I want to add the color. And don't freak out if you go into your flower at this stage. It's not all that critical. So I'm just going around. I'm not going all the way up to the edge um, just because I want to preserve a little bit of that white border. Now I have too much here so I'm going to sponge this. Alright, so I'm dipping into the pool party and I'm just, for starters, I'm just going to drop my color like that by dabbing it. And obviously I wanted more concentrated towards the flower and I want it a little bit darker at the bottom and what's going to happen is the water is going to naturally go where the water is and stop where the paper is dry which is the cool thing and on top here I'm just going to go very lightly just enough so that I have a little bit of color <clears throat> I keep the, um, the paper towel handy always um, just because I don't want to have too much water on my brush. Okay. And it's better to go lightly than, um, or lighter at the beginning than to go darker a lot easier to add. So as you can see here I have a little bit of a coverage and I'm going to add my Lucky Limeade right away towards the bottom only and you'll see the color will mix very well with the pool party 
it's going to create that beautiful gradient of a color. I'm not going to go up, I'm just going to focus in um, the, um, the bottom part of my image. I don't know what it is with me today, but I can't speak. And I was supposed to record this, uh, to tape this tutorial yesterday, which was Monday. And I ended up finishing my other tutorial too late, so you're getting this a day late. Alright, so at this point, I'm going to stop, even though this might not be my final background, but I'm just going to stop and dry this for a little bit. Okay, so this is pretty dry. Uh, your paper will warp a little bit, but don't worry about that. You can straighten that up in the end. Now I'm going to work on the flower. And uh, my water, I'm going to make sure that my brush is clean. I don't want to put any green on the inside of my flower. So now what we want to do is, let me close up. We want to soften up these lines here. So I'm going to, my brush is wet but not soaking wet. I'm just going to go around the flower without going into the background and soften up those stamped lines. And this will give us an even more natural look. Now I know that everybody has their own way of watercoloring and by all means I'm no expert. I keep saying that I know but whatever I learned about watercoloring I learned on my own and this is what works for me. You might want to experiment your own way. Um, I'm just showing you what I do. But it's certainly not the Bible. Okay. So now we have a bit of that pink that we drawn inside our flower. And as you, I just want to show you also, um, see here, the text has remained intact. And this is why I wanted to use the Adirondack um, ink, because it is waterproof. But as for the flower, I wanted that model look, because I really don't want to have any harsh stamp line. I'm going to dry this again. So one thing to remember about watercoloring is that you need to work in sections. If you're working uh, on two sections that are touching each other, one after the other, the colors will contaminate. And because I want to um, do shadows under each petal, that won't work if two of the adjacent sections are wet at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on a small, like on one petal, move over there, move over there, and if the first one that I did is not dry, then I'll take my heat tool and dry it, and then I can move on and do the one next to it. That makes sense? So now I'm going to switch brush. I'm going to take my finer brush. So I have the same color as I use for stamping, Pick Raspberry. This is the refill bottle, and I have Regal Rose from Stampin' Up. So I'm going to put these two in my palette wells. And like I said, a little bit goes a long way. Okay, so like I said, we're going to work on one petal at a time. So I'm going to dip my brush in my water and I'm going to grab a little bit. Uh, yeah, just want to make sure I grab the right color. Yes. Okay, so this is Regal Rose. Whoops, I dropped some water here. I'm not going to touch that area. I'm going to start here. Let me zoom inside as close as possible. I'm going to start here and with this first color I want to put it all over that petal. So I've done the first coat and what I want to do is I want this area lighter than here so I've dipped my brush again in the water and I'm just going to work that color towards the end of that petal. And what that does is it creates, I went over here, it creates a beautiful gradient, as you can see here. Just remember that if you're going to stop somewhere in the middle of the flower, you will create a line like I have here. And although I do love that in the background, I don't want that on my flower. This is a question of preference again. So I have my first coat. I'm going to dip my water brush again in water. 
and I don't want it loaded with water. I'm just going to pick a tiny bit of that uh, picked raspberry color and I'm going to start here at the end layering my color down rinse my brush dab it a little bit and then walk my color all the way up sort of like pushing it in essence and if my brush is too wet I need to um, clean it. So as you can see I went back and forth but I made sure that I stopped while I was toward the end here. So you can see now that we have a nice gradient. We have our base color right here. I could even go one more time and push it even further. But you see as I lift in the corner and so that way I'm not going to have any harsh lines and the um, the area here where I want it darker will give us a nice beautiful shadow. So now that I'm done this petal, I'm going to move to another section so that it doesn't touch that one. I'm going to do another one to show you and then I'm going to go into uh, speed up mode because this will be very long for you to watch. So again I'm going with my lighter color. This is way too much. I'm going to do the regal rose right up to the edge here and then bring it back up. Bring it down again and bring it back up. Okay, so there's that. And then I'm going to dip my brush again in water and I'll pick up, I'll show you how much I pick up. It's really just a tip, really. And I'll layer this color which is very intense as you can see and I'll rinse before I get to the end because I really don't want a lot of that color at the end again I make sure that I don't stop in the middle Okay, so I'm going to keep doing that and the other thing too I wanted to mention is that if you're not happy uh, with the colors that you're getting, don't worry about it. Just do one, um, one go and then come back and darken the areas that you want darker. Okay, so I'm going to move back a little bit and I'm going to finish this and uh, I'll talk to you in a little bit. So there it is, I finished coloring the flower and I have a nice good contrast between the petals. And now I'm going to keep on working on the background. This was just my first layer. I'm going to add some more of that Lucky Limeade. I'm just going to darken in essence the, um, um, the background. So and this is... Uh, party and we're going to add some Midnight Muse which is going to be super dark and that's going to give us that nice pop for our flower. So now I'm going to use my thicker brush. I'm going to go with Pool Party first. I'm going to start here from the bottom and make my sky a little bit darker. And at the same time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of that to clean up anything that's around my flower. This is a very freeform exercise. It's a perfect time to let your 
creativity flow. That's why I love watercoloring so much. I think I think that it's um it's very free, very liberating, kind of like art journaling. If I want to compare with something else. All right. So that's enough for my blue. Now I'm going to go into Lucky Limeade. And you'll notice that I'm not drying anything. I really want this time around I want the colors to um, to blend into each other as opposed to when I did the flower. Okay, and now, hmm, watch this. This is going to be fun. <laughs> I'm going to dip into that Midnight Muse and wherever I've added water, look at that color. Oh, it's so yummy. I'm going to try and go as close to the flower as I can. And this is going to be my main shadow. It's very dramatic. Oh, so gorgeous that color. Okay. And I don't want it to uh, run too much. I'm going to go over uh, what I just did. I'm going to dry this first though. I just wanted that first layer to blend a little bit and then I'm going to darken that spot right here. Okay, now I'm going to add just a little bit more blue around the flower. This time I'm not going to wet anything and I'm going to see where it lands. And then I'm just going to walk that color right into the flower. Okay, done. So that's my watercolor image and now I'm going to put the cart together. It's going to be very simple. I'm going to have just a, a very thin mat and it's going to get mounted on a white cart base. So there's my cart. Now I want to show you the, the cart that I made when I was at the, um, the Collins show uh, during the Impression Obsession workshop. This was um, this is the, um, the peony stamp by Impression Obsession as well. And we did the same technique. Um, of course we didn't have a lot of time to complete three cards so kind of did a quickie job but it still looks nice. I like it. And yesterday I did this as a tutorial for the store. These are hydrangeas obviously and instead of stamping in the same color I embossed in white and then I gave it the watercolor treatment. It's just a different um, way of doing it. This is much easier than what I showed you today. It's an easier technique and this was the one that we did during the workshop. So both are embossed in white and the last one that I had made was using the same stamp the hydrangeas, but um, they had a stamp on acetate. If I move the card you'll see. Underneath there's a pattern paper and this frame kind of looks like a window. And what we did is we stamped with stays on and then we uh, colored on the reverse side with uh, pearlized paints. 
and that's what gave us that nice shimmer that you see. So these are the cards that I wanted to share with you today. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. Unbelievable. I have no idea what I did. <laughs> I have no idea what I just showed you, but I bet it was interesting. I can tell you that. It must have been interesting. No, that's not true. I have three of the cards that uh, I probably showed you. <laughs> I told you I'm in a weird mood. Uh, so now I'm gonna get busy. I'm gonna do the stuff that you just saw. <laughs> and um, that's it. Thanks for watching as usual. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you later. Bye.